Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea PS4A, which is on wave properties. Waves are incredibly important, and they're relatively simple to understand, but most students don't get it. And so the first thing you should understand is that there's really only two ways that we can move energy from place to place. If I want to move energy from where I'm at to somewhere else, I could do it using particles, I could throw something around the room, or I could use waves, so I could use my voice, or I could use light, or I could also use electric currents to move energy from place to place. And so they're incredibly important and they have relatively few properties. And so what is a wave? It's simply a disturbance. And if we look at a typical wave, they're all going to have a wavelength, and that's going to be just the distance of a wave, how big a wave is. We could measure it here, or we could measure it from crest to crest, or trough to trough, but it's how long that wave is. Also, they're going to have a frequency. Frequency is the number of waves you're going to have in a given period of time. So if you were to listen to a real low frequency sound, that's going to be a few number of waves in a given period of time. But if it's a high frequency sound, it's a lot of waves in a given period of time. And these two things are related to the medium that it's moving through. And that's an important characteristic of waves. Waves are moving through a medium. So for example, sound is moving from my voice to the microphone through air, but the medium doesn't move. The air doesn't move. Well, how could I change the medium that I'm speaking through and change the frequency of those waves? Have you ever inhaled helium? What does that do to your voice? Well, it changes the medium of the air inside your vocal cords and you get a high pitch frequency. Likewise, if you had a real low density gas that you were to breathe in, you'd have a low frequency or low noise. What's another property of waves is going to be their amplitude, or it's the size of the wave. And so the volume of my voice is related to the amplitude of those waves. Waves can be used to store information. So we can put information, we can digitize it, for example, and we can send it as a wave from location to location. So not only are you hearing my sound from the speakers of your computer, but you're accessing this through the internet. And so you're receiving that as a wave. So they're incredibly important. Let's talk about a few concepts, starting with sound. So what is sound? Sound is simply an oscillation or disturbance in air that's transmitted through the air. And so if we ring a bell right here, the wave is moving out. It's kind of a compressional wave that moves out from wherever the sound is created to where it's received. But the air doesn't move from location to location. Likewise, it's going to vibrate your eardrum in your ear, and you're going to start to perceive that as sound. What if we take away the air? Then you can't hear anything. And so in space, you're not going to have sound because there's no medium. What's another characteristic? Resonance is important as well. And so first we have to talk about interference. Let's say we have two waves that are right on top of each other. And these waves are in sync. So when the, tr the crest of one is right next to the crest of another and the troughs as well. So those are going to interfere with each other. And what you'll get is a bigger wave, a wave that's a combination of those two. Likewise, if we had two waves that are the same size, but they're out of sync with one another, it would actually cancel each other out. And so you should know that waves can interfere with one another. And what's a property then that we can have from that? Well, if you've ever pushed somebody on a swing, you realize that you have to push them at the right point if you want them to get higher and higher and higher. So by pushing them at the same point, what you're really doing is adding, you're interfering with that wave. And so let's say that we add a string, for example. If we vibrate a string, the wave is going to go down one side and it's going to come back the other, and down one side and come back the other. And what eventually you get is as those waves are moving back and forth, they're interfering with each other. So you'll have some points where you're building up the wave and sometimes where you're canceling it, it, it out. And so we call that resonance. And you've experienced resonance if you've ever sang in the shower. You'll notice that if you hit one pitch in the shower, it's going to sound really, really good. And that's because the waves bouncing around are, are interfering with each other and they're building themselves up. And all instruments are built on this idea of resonance. What are some other characteristics of waves? Waves aren't going to run into objects if the objects are too small. So if we have an object that's really, really small, a wave will simply miss it. And that's really important when we're talking about the waves of light. If we have really small objects like an atom, light can't even hit it, and it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be reflected, or it's not going to bounce off of that. Likewise, when we change the medium, we can change the speed of the wave. And so, what's an example of that? Right here, we have some glass. So we have a lens right here, and as the light is moving towards it, it's bending as it moves from one medium to another. And so as waves move from medium to medium, they, they can be transmitted through it, they can reflect off of it, but weirdly they can also bend in response to that medium as well. 
And so diffraction, or excuse me, refraction that we see, like here is a, a, a little bit of water on a glass and it's refracting the light coming from the Golden Gate Bridge and so it's actually bending that light and we're getting an image that's upside down. So how do you teach all of this through the, through the school? Um, you want to start in the lower elementary grades by talking about simple waves and water waves are a great place to start. Fill up a little pan of water and start generating some waves. And what you'll notice is that the waves will move from the area where the disturbance is, but the water is not going to move. What would be a good way to demo this? We could put some coloring in it, food coloring, generate some waves, and we'll notice that the, that the food coloring takes much longer to move out than the wave does. Also, you should get to this understanding that sound can vibrate matter. And so an example would be right now the sound waves that I'm producing are vibrating the microphone that's picking up those sounds, and likewise, Matter can vibrate and it can produce sounds. And so this big bass drum, if you hit it, it's vibrating back and forth and that's generating that sound. Likewise, if we were to generate enough sound, we would start to vibrate that bass drum as well. As you move into the upper elementary grades, you want to talk about waves interfering with one another. And so let's say we have this wave and this wave and they're going to move towards each other. What will happen right when they get the middle is that they'll build a larger wave when they hit. And so they're going to build on each other. They're going to increase the amplitude of that wave. Um, likewise, if we have two waves that are opposite, one wave on this side, one wave on the other side, what happens to them is when they hit each other, they're actually going to interfere in a negative amount. Likewise, that really explains a few things. Number one, it explains resonance, why we can get um, waves building each other up. But also you have to understand that as those waves move through each other, they're going to emerge unaffected. In other words, waves are going to interfere, but overall they're not going to cancel each other out. They just keep moving. And so what's an example of that? Imagine if you had a bunch of people talking in a room. They're all generating sound waves, but they're not like destroying each other's sounds. All those sounds are moving through each other throughout the room. Another thing you want to talk about in elementary grades is the idea that earthquakes are simply waves in the earth and we call those seismic waves and so what's happening is we have some disturbance and it's being transmitted through the earth. As we move into middle school we want to start talking about the parts of a wave. You should identify the wavelength and the frequency. Remember the frequency is going to be the number of waves we have in a given period of time and then also the amplitude of the wave. And remember that they require something to move through. So sound moves, it moves through a material to generate a wave or a water wave. The only exception to this is radiation like light, and we'll talk about that in a future video. Also you want to talk about um, the earth and the structure of the earth, and how do we know what's on the inside of the earth? As we've tried to drill into the earth, we can just barely get into the crust a little bit. So how do we know that there's a solid core on the inside? It's as these earthquakes are moving through the earth, we can see how they bend, how they move, how fast they move, and we can figure out what the inside of the earth looks like. As we move into high school, we want to get, start to quantify this a little bit. And students should understand that wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. What does that mean? As we increase the frequency, in, increase the number of waves we have in a given period of time, what's that going to do to the wavelength? It's going to make the, make the wavelength get smaller. Likewise, as we decrease the frequency, we're going to have wavelengths that get much, much larger. Also, we want to talk about refraction, reflection, and transmission. And so when one wave bounces off a medium, so right here we have air and then we have glass, so we have a little prism right here, some of that light is going to be reflected or bounced off of that. Some of it is going to be bent or refracted, and that only occurs when we move from one medium to another. But also some of that light here is going to be transmitted through. And what are some applications of waves in our lives that make them important? Well, the first one would be the idea of information. So information like you're seeing my image right now on an LCD projector or, or maybe you're seeing it on your computer screen, those are just pixelated information. But that information is being transmitted to your screen or to the projector as a wave. And a lot of that information is stored inside the computer itself as waves. Likewise, if we're talking about resonance, why is that important? All instruments are really working on this principle of resonance. And so we get resonance in the strings of a string instrument, but we also get resonance in a uh, horn, for example, in a flute. It's resonance of the um, airwaves within that flute or within that horn. Um, and so waves are incredibly important. They have a few simple properties, but I hope that was helpful.